Today we've got this nice problem from the math magazine about a sequence of functions defined via, well, differentiation. And our goal, well, is to find the closed form for this sequence. So let's say that y sub n is defined by the following recursion. We have y0 equals 1, and then we have yn is the derivative of yn minus 1 times sine squared. And like I said, our goal is to get a closed form for maybe really all of these functions in this sequence, but the general one will obviously be enough. So I'd say probably the first thing to do is a bit of exploration so that we could probably just come up with a guess as to what the closed form is and then perhaps prove it with induction or something. Now, coming up with a guess and then proving it is always maybe the easiest way to go about these kind of things. Okay, so let's start with y sub 1, which is the derivative with respect to x of sine squared of x, well, nominally times 1. But here we can use the chain rule. Observe that the chain rule will give us 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. And now we could leave it like that, or we could observe that that's exactly a double angle formula for the sine function. So in fact, this is equal to the sine of 2x. And whether or not it'll be useful to write it as sine of 2x instead of 2 sine x cosine of x is yet to be determined, but it's at least something to think about. And I'd say it's probably what we should do during this exploration phase until it either works and gets us some sort of conjecture, or it ends up at a dead end. Okay, so now let's look at y sub 2, which is going to be the derivative with respect to x of y sub 1 times sine squared of x, which in turn is going to be the derivative with respect to x of, let's see, we have sine of 2x times sine squared of x using our recursion. But now we have to use the product rule along with the chain rule for both parts. So taking the derivative of sine 2x will give us 2 times cosine 2x, and then we just multiply by the sine squared of x. And then we'll need to multiply or add that to the derivative of sine squared times sine 2x. So let's see, that's going to be 2 sine 2x times sine of x times cosine of x. There we used the product rule. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty good. Now I'd like to observe that I can factor a 2 times a sine out of this whole thing. So that'll give me 2 times sine of x. And then what's left over? Well, from this first term, I have cosine of 2x times sine of x. And from this second term, I have sine of 2x times cosine of x. So something like that. But now what I can do is observe that this stuff that I'm underlining in green is exactly the result of an angle addition formula for the sine function. And we look for that basically because this double angle formula is a special case of the angle sum formula. And if we're trying to generalize this, well, this would be maybe the tie that we want to find between these two cases. So in fact, here we get 2 times sine of x times sine of, well, 2x plus x, which is sine of 3x. So let's maybe collect these down here. We have y1 is equal to the sine of 2x. We have y2 is equal to 2 times the sine of x times the sine of 3x. And then, well, perhaps what we'd like to do is do this one more time just to make sure that we have some sort of like um, logical guess here. And let's maybe move on to y sub 3. I won't go through all of the details for y sub 3 as they're very, very similar to this above, but I will do the setup. So let's observe that that's going to be 2 times the derivative with respect to x of, let's see, we'll have a sine cubed of x 
times sine of 3x. We get that sine cubed of x from the sine squared that's being multiplied in. Okay, cool. But notice the taking derivatives of either of these will give us a 3. So taking the derivative of sine cubed, the 3 is going to kind of obviously come down. Taking the derivative of sine 3x, the 3 is going to come out using the chain rule. So anything that we do here will get a 6. And then, well, let's observe that uh, sine squared is going to be attached to both of these. We'll have a sine squared attached to this when we take the derivative. That's pretty clear. And we'll have a sine squared attached to this whole thing when we take the derivative of sine 3x as well. So all in all, we can factor a sine squared x out of this. And then after that, we're going to be left with the following. And I'll let you check this. But it'll be something like cos 3x times sine, or sorry, cos x times sine 3x, cos 3x times sine of x. But now that is also a angle sum formula, and that'll be the sine of 3x plus x. In other words, the sine of 4x. So we could collect that over here, and we see that y3 is equal to 6. Let's leave the 6 off, and then we have sine squared of x times sine of 4x. And I'm leaving the 6 off because we'd like some sort of pattern here. And observe that 6 is equal to 3 factorial, and 2 is equal to 2 factorial, and 1 is equal to 1 factorial. So that sets up some sort of maybe hopeful pattern here. Okay, so now that we've kind of done enough examples here to see what a pattern might be, let's conjecture that pattern and then prove it. So looking at these three cases over here, I think it's not a big jump to the following claim. And that is for all n bigger than or equal to zero, y sub n is equal to n factorial times sine to the n minus one of x times sine of n plus one times x. Now notice that all of these satisfy this rule. Okay, so notice that the kind of logical way to do this would be with induction. Our base case is already taken care of. In fact, we did more than enough for our base case in our exploration over here. So now we just need to do the induction step, which starts with the induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have, well, we have the statement holding. So in other words, we have y sub k is equal to k factorial times sine to the k minus 1 of x times sine of k plus 1 times x. So again, that's the induction hypothesis. And then next, what we'll do is consider the next case and prove that the next case satisfies the same pattern. And that completes our proof by induction. So in other words, we want to look at y sub k plus 1, which by definition is the derivative with respect to x of y sub k times sine squared. Again, by our rule right here. But now by our induction hypothesis, we know that this, well, the y sub k can be replaced with what we have right above. But then the derivative is linear, so I can factor a k factorial out. So let's do that. And then we have the derivative with respect to x of, let's see, that's going to be sine to the power k plus 1 of x times sine of k plus 1 times x. So we've got something like that. Now we've got to use the product rule for that. So let's say we're going to have k factorial, and then taking the derivative of the sine to the k plus 1 will give us k plus 1 times sine to the kth power of x times cosine of x. And then to that, we will multiply sine of k plus 1 of x, just using our product rule. So again, that's from taking the derivative of this sine to the k plus 1. So that's that right there. And now let's look at what it is for taking the derivative of the sine of k plus 1 times x. So that's going to give us, well, we've got a k plus 1 out front, and then we have a sine to the k plus 1 of x times a cosine of k plus 1 times x. 
So just to color code, the derivative of this shows up in these two pieces here and here. Okay, cool. But now we can factor out a greatest common factor of this. And you might say, well, do we want to factor everything out or do we want to leave some? Well, keep in mind that we know what the pattern should be. So that should give us a hint of what to factor out. So if we're replacing n with k plus one, then that means we should have a k plus one factorial out front. But we get that from multiplying k plus one into k. And then we should also have, well, a sine to the k plus one minus one, which is sine to the k power of x. And we can factor both of those out. But after that, we're gonna be left with, well, let's look at it. We'll have cos x times sine of k plus one times x for this first term. And for the second term, we'll have sine of x times cosine of k plus one times x. Cool. But now let's observe that we're essentially done. And that's because by an angle sum formula for sine, we can replace all of this stuff that I've overlined with sine of k plus two times x. But after doing that, we've shown that assuming the kth case is true, the k plus first case is true. But that's exactly what we needed to do to finish this proof by induction.